updates in JavaScript suck, but there's a massive new API update called the Temporal API that's going to completely revolutionize dates. And in this video, I'm gonna explain everything you need to know about it so you can start working with dates in a much more enjoyable way. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna talk all about the Temporal Date API. Now, as we all know, dates in JavaScript are clunky to work with, they're not immutable at all, and they're overall just not very useful. They were written a long time ago and have not been updated since. So that's the idea behind this Temporal API. And I've actually written an entire blog article that's very in-depth covering pretty much everything you need to know about Temporal API. I'd recommend checking that out after this video if you want. Now, in order to get working with Temporal API, we can't just go into a script file and start writing out Temporal. And the reason for that is this is an actually stage three proposal. So stage four means it's finalized. Stage three means it's almost finalized. So that's why none of the browsers have implemented it yet. But this is something I could see coming pretty quickly and it's something that you definitely wanna use. And there's also a polyfill you can use to start using it now, and that's what we're gonna do. So if you come down here a little ways, you can see you can just type in npm i install this polyfill, and then you can just copy this little bit of code right here to start using it. Now I've already installed this polyfill and I'm using Snowpack just to run my development environment. So I can just type npm start here, and that's going to start up our project, and it's going to open up on the right-hand side of our screen. Right now we just have an empty index.html, so there's nothing in it, but we can inspect this. And if we just bring over our terminal, and we go over to the console tab, we can actually start working with this. So if we come into our script here and I just paste that code I copied over, and we don't really care about this INTL section because we're only caring about the temporal API, you'll notice two things. First, it imports the useful stuff for temporal and to temporal instant, and then it overwrites the date prototype to add this to temporal instant to it. And that's just because we can convert a date. For example, I can say new date dot to temporal, and it's going to convert from a date to a temporal object. So that's just something that's useful to know that you can actually do, and that's why this single line right here is there. We're not gonna worry about that though, so we can just get rid of that and focus purely on this temporal object. Now with this temporal API, let me just bring the documentation over. You can see that there's a bunch of different data types we can use, and that's something I really love about it. The date data type in JavaScript just encompasses everything, but with temporals, you can have things like zoned date and times, non-time zone date and times, you can have just dates, dust, just times. It really opens you up to a whole new world. So the first thing you probably wanna do is just to create a temporal object that references the current date. Normally you would just say new date, and that's going to give you the current date but with temporal, what you want to do is you want to say temporal.now, and that's going to give you a bunch of different methods that allow you to essentially get an object of the current type that you want for the current time. Let's say that we want to get the plain date time, and I want to get the ISO format because that's just the standard format I work with. I can just say const uh, now is equal to that, and we can just console.log now. And if I hit save, you can see we get this new temporal plane date time, which has a bunch of different properties on it. For example, it's the 21th minute in the hour. But if you want, we can convert this to a string. So it's a little bit easier to see. Now you can see it's on the year 2022, March 1st. And this is the exact time all the way down to like micro and nanoseconds. It's very specific, which is something, again, you can't do with normal dates. But let's say I didn't care about the time. I just wanted the date. Well, I can get the plain date here instead. So I can just say plain date ISO. And now I can save and you can see it's just giving me date or I can get just time related information. So I can say plain time ISO. And now you can see I'm only getting time information. So based on these different types of plain date, plain time, plain date time, we can see that we can get just specific information we care about. And also if you wanted to care about time zones, you could also get the zoned date time ISO. And now if you save, you can see that I am in the American Chicago time zone. So it's putting that on there at the end and it's saying this is a time that's based on a specific time zone. And that's something that's really nice because it's something you couldn't do very easily with normal dates. Converting between time zones and non-time zones was pretty difficult to do. So this temporal.now object has functions for getting the current time, date, whatever it is you're looking for. But let's say you wanted to get a date or a time in a specific location. Well, here you could just take the type you want. For example, you can see here we have a bunch of different types, calendar, duration, instant. But you'll see here we have plain date, plain date time, plain month day, plain time, plain year month, time zone, and zone date time. Those are really the main things you care about. Plain date is going to give you just a date. Plain date time is going to be date and time. Month day is only going to give you a month and day. It leaves off the year completely. Time, again, just gives you the time. Year month is similar to month day in that it gives you a year and a month, but it ignores all the day related information. And zoned date time, this is going to be if you want to get a time in a specific time zone. So let's just start off with plain date, for example. And for the constructor, let's say we wanted to get a new one of these, we could say new 
plane date, and you'll notice that this constructor takes in a year, month, day, calendar, and so on. So we could say 2022, one, one. So January 1st on 2022. And if we console out log.to string here, you can see we get that exact date, 2022, January 1st. Now the final way that you can get a date is to actually call a method called from. So we can say dot from, and this from method takes in a string. So for example, I could take 2022.0101, and you can see that gives me the exact same date or more importantly, it takes an object. And this object takes in a bunch of different properties. For example, I could pass in the year. And I could say the year here is 2022. The month is going to be one, and the day is going to be one. And again, I get the exact same result. So you can either use the temporal.now syntax, you can use the new syntax, or you can use this awesome from syntax. All of those allow you to define a date, time, or whatever, and you can do that for all the different times that you can think of. So for example, if you wanted a zoned date time, I could get a zoned date time. But you see I'm missing the time zone, so I would have to pass in a time zone here of the exact time zone that I wanted. So let's just say that I'm gonna use the current time zone. What I could do is I could say temporal.now.timezone, and that's going to give me the current time zone. I gotta make sure I call this as a function, and there we go, you can see that I'm getting January 1st at midnight in my specific time zone because I specified year, month, day, and a time zone. Now those are probably the main data types you're going to use, but there's a few additional data types that you may not realize exist. One of those, for example, is going to be the instant data type. So if we just say now.instant, I console log now, you can see that this is printing out, and make sure I convert that to a string, you can see it's printing out essentially the current time, but the important thing is this is actually using UTC time. So anytime you use the instant data type, everything is in UTC, which is really important because a lot of times you want to work in a consistent time format like UTC. But if you wanted to get a, you know, from a specific date time with an instant, you can't actually pass an object. You have to pass it a string. So you could say 2022.0101, but you also need to pass it a time zone. You can see if I don't pass it a time zone offset, I get an error. So I would need to pass it a time zone offset such as my time zone offset of negative six. Now you can see that that is converted to UTC time. Now that alone, having all these data types is nice, but it's not really what makes the temporal API so amazing. What makes it so amazing is all the helper methods you get. So let's just come in here and we're gonna say that we wanna get a temporal dot plain date time for now. So we'll say now dot plain date time iso. We can say console dot log what that is. We'll just say now dot two string. And let's just do plain date instead of plain date time. Make it a little bit easier to read. You can see March 1st. Now what happens if I wanted to add one day to this? Doing that using the old date methods is a huge pain, but it's super easy to do here. I can just say now dot add. And what this is going to take is an object. And this object I can say, for example, days. And I can say one. And that's going to add one day. Now we're on March 2nd. I could say I wanted to add some months. Let's say we want to add three months. Now you can see that we're in June here. Or I can even add some years. So I can say let's add two years. Now we're in 2024. It's an object that I can just pass information to. And when I call now.add, the important thing is it gives me a new date. So if I console log string, just come down here, fix all my parentheses, you can see it's still March 1st but my new date here now has that new information inside of it. So all these methods such as add, there's another one called subtract, does the same thing but subtraction. These methods return to you a brand new date instead of actually modifying the date you're working on, which is something the date API from before did a really big, bad job at because it would modify it for you instead of returning a new one. So this is super nice and you can chain this together. For example, now I wanna add on a year here of two and you can see, whoops, years and now you can see we're in 2021-1130. Now some other helper methods that are really useful is the ability to compare two different dates or times and so on. So let's get a now to, and we're just gonna set that to the exact same thing. And if we wanted to compare now and now to, we would just say now equals equals now to, and you're gonna see this returns false. And that's because these are two different references. Now, if you're unfamiliar with reference versus value, I'm gonna have a video on it linked in the cards and description for you, but essentially they're two different references, so they're always going to be not equal. But there is an equals method where you can pass in two different dates. So you can see here, we're saying is now equal to now to, and that's going to return true. And what it's going to do is it's actually going to check to see if the date, the month, the year, and so on is exactly the same between each one of these date instances. And if so, it's gonna return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false. Now let's just change this to be, for example, a plain date, and let's just make it something different, 2022, one, one. So it's the beginning of the year, and make sure we say new here. So you can see that now it's returning false because these are two different dates. Now what happens though if I wanted to get the difference between these two dates? I could say like now 
sense now too. And what this is going to return to me is a duration. You can see we have a specific data type called duration. And if I just convert this to a string, you can see it's saying that the duration, that's what this P represents, is 59 days. So there's 59 days between this current date and this now too. We can also use instead of sense, we could say until, and that's going to be essentially the opposite. It's saying how long until this other date. And you can see that now too happened 59 days ago because it's using until, so this is negative 59 days. While when we used since, we're saying how long has it been since this other date has occurred? In our case, it's been 59 days since now too. Now I did mention that if we get rid of this two string here, this is returning a duration data type. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later, but I wanna finish out all the extra helper methods that the temporal API adds for us. So if we come in here with now, we can just say now dot hit this control plus, and you can see we have a bunch of different methods. One of the ones that is really useful and important to use is this one called with. With allows me to just set a specific value. So I can say, hey, now I want it to have a year of 2021. And what that does is it changes absolutely nothing other than the year. So I'm just changing the year to 2021. And again, it doesn't change now. So if I come in here and I say that now two is equal to this, and I print out now two dot two string, you can see we get 2021. But if I look at now, you can see now is still 2022. It doesn't actually change this date. It returns to us a brand new date. And that's really important to know. All these methods are returning a new temporal object. They're not actually modifying the existing one. So width is really useful if you want to just overwrite a specific property, for example, year, day, time, whatever. Another really useful method is the round method. So let's change this to a date time. Let's just get rid of that. And we can just print this out. You can see that it has everything all the way down to like nanoseconds. Well, let's say I don't really care about the nanoseconds or minutes or even seconds. I can round this to the nearest hour, for example. Now, when I save, you can see here that it is rounded and saying now it is 13 hours, zero minutes, zero seconds, and got rid of all that additional information. But I can take this a step further and actually pass an object here and define how I want to round. So I can say smallest unit, that's going to be hour. So I say I want to round to the nearest hour. But I can also say what my rounding mode is. So for example, I could set my rounding mode here to be floor. And now it's always going to round down. So now you can see it says 12. Or I can change it to seal. And now it's going to always round up to 13, for example. Also, I can change my rounding increment. So if I come in here, my rounding increment, let's say I change that to 4. Now when I save, you can see it rounds to 12. While if I change my rounding mode to ceiling, you can see it rounds to 16 because it's rounding by increments of 4, so 0, 4, 8, 12, 16, and so on. So this is really useful if you want to round to a specific day, time, hour, whatever it is, super useful function. Now the last really useful function is one that's actually not on the object, it's on the actual data type. So if we say temporal.planDateTime, and let's just change it to a plain date here, if we say dot compare, this is going to give us a function that takes in two dates and returns either positive one, negative one, and so on, depending on which one is sooner and which one is later. So what we want to do here is we're going to say const yesterday equals now dot subtract days one, and we're going to get tomorrow. And that's just going to be adding one day. And I'm going to create an array. So I'm going to say const days is equal to now, yesterday, tomorrow. So this is essentially out of order. If I console log days, you can see we get our three days here and they're out of order. And if we convert them to strings, we'll be able to see that. But what we can do is we can call sort on this array. So I can say sort, and I wanna sort using a method. So I can just pass in this comparison method here. And what this is going to do right here, this is going to sort all of my days. So let's just say const sorted days is equal to that. And now if I just wanted to print out that, I could say sort of days dot map for each day, just convert it to a string. And now if I save, you can see that it's printing these out in order. We can see we have 28, and then we have March 1st, and then we have March 2nd. So we got February 28th, March 1st, and March 2nd. So it's printing those out in order. If we change this to a date instead of date time, you can see it's a little bit easier to see how that sorted them in order. So this temporal plain date dot compare, plain date time compare, and so on is really useful for comparing between different times and sorting an array. That's really the only thing it's useful for. Now I did mention that there is a duration type that you can use as well. So I can come in here and I can say temporal dot duration, and I can say dot with to create, or I'm sorry, dot from to create a new duration. So let's say I want to do a duration of like three days. So I can say days three, and that's going to be my duration. Const duration is three days. Just get rid of all this code here. Now I can use this duration. For example, I can just log it out. Duration.toString. 
and you can see three days is what's being printed out. And I can also say like, oh, let's do months of four. Now you can see it's four months and three days, super useful. But I can also use this duration to do certain additions. So I could say now dot add our duration, and then I can convert that to a string. And what that's going to do is it's going to add three days and four months to the current date. So it's gonna give me July 4th. You can also use a bunch of the other methods we talked about. So for durations, we can add, we can subtract, we can use the with function to set specific values, and we can even round with our duration if we want. But there are even more you can use. For example, I can say negated. Now, if I just print this out as a string down here, you can see this is going to return to me. If I actually call it as a function, it's going to return to me the negative of whatever duration I pass in. There's a few other things that you can do. For example, I can get the absolute value. So if I negate this, and then I get the absolute value, you can see it still returns to me a positive value. And now finally, something that's really useful is the total method. So I can come in here and I can just say total. And let's say I wanna get the total number of minutes that occur in like four hours. So you can say hours four. Now if I save, you can see we get 240 minutes. Now if I wanted to do a larger duration, for example, days and months, and I save, you're gonna notice we're gonna get an error that says starting point is required. And that's because depending on daylight savings times and like how many days are in a month, we need to have a specific day we start counting from for these days and months. So to do that, we need to pass an object here instead. And you're gonna see we have two properties. We have the unit, which in our case we're set to minutes. And then we're gonna have the relative to, which we're just gonna to set to our current date of now. Now when we say that you can see we get 180,000 minutes is what occurs in three days and four months. Now I know this is a lot to take in, but essentially all this temporal API stuff is, is adding new ways for us to deal with dates. It's adding tons of different helper functions for like the total, add, subtract, round, and so on. And it's also giving us dates and times that allow us to represent just days or just times or even like years and months combined together instead of always having to deal with the same data type over and over again. It's really useful in my opinion. Now, if you enjoyed this, you're definitely going to want to check out my blog, which goes even more in depth on this and has hundreds of articles on other topics. I'm going to link that down in the description for you. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.